All right, so we're here with Stephen Bates from the office with Ontario Outdoors Magazine, and he had uh, a connection. A uh, group wanted to donate all these rods to the Tackle Share program so you can borrow them for fishing uh, for free around the province. So we're going to put those into use uh, next summer. But he's going to show us how to set up for salmon, which is a little different than if you're going for bass or panfish. And we've grabbed one of the rods that was donated, so it, it's something that you can have at home without going and buying a, a really expensive salmon rod. And he's going to show you the basics and we're going to go hook a salmon with it. All right, Stephen, what do we got? All right, David, so what I've done is I've taken, put all of the, con what we need as far as rigging this rod up. This is just a normal medium action, six and a half foot rod. So we take these little, these little pieces of rubber. There's two pieces of rubber here, one. And then there's two. And then we take our float. This was what holds the float to the line so the float doesn't slip up and down. And you can set it in a permanent spot. Because in this water, we're only fishing about a foot and a half, two feet down. So our float is on. All right, yep. so then what we want to do, we want to go down. We'll put our hook on first. This is, a, this is a number 10 wide gap hook, just a normal hook. So we'll put our line through. We'll wrap this around five times. Come back through the bottom. Wet it, cinch it up and pull it tight. Trim the tag, not the main line. So then, now we have a rig with, here's our, here's our hook is right here in my hand, mm -hmm. and there's a line. So we're gonna go about, that's about two and a half feet. We'll go to two feet. And then what we're gonna do to hold the weight in place is we're gonna put some split shot. I've got a few here to start with. And this is a balsa wood float, so it's fairly buoyant, so we wanna put a fair number of hooks. And what I do is I put three just below the float to keep it straight. And I'll put two down a little further closer to where the row bag's gonna be, or the bait you're gonna use. And we're, that's it, good to go. So we will put a row bag on. <clears throat> so just show us again, recap what we've got. We've got, <clears throat> we've got a hook. What size hook is that? That's a number 10 wide gap. Number 10 wide gap. And then we've got about a foot and then there's two split shot. And then we've got another foot, three split shot, balsa wood float. And that's it. And that's it. And what size line was it again? Eight pound test. Eight pound test on a regular medium action yep. rod with a 4,000 reel. So something that a lot of people will have for bass fishing. Yeah. So now I'm going to take this little roll bag and I'm going to put it just below the knot like that. So that when it floats down, it floats down the river like this. Doo, 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 and they go, Bloop. and that's it. <laughs> so we're, we're hand feeding them, so to speak. We're letting it float right into their mouth. All right. Battle, and this one's going to be a little bit longer in order to land this fish because uh, with a shorter rod that's not designed for salmon, it's going to take used. more effort to uh, bring it in. This is this is Rainbow Row. They're perfect commercially right? farmed. Okay. Yeah. You just tie them up in bags like that? You tie or? them up in different colored bags. And keep trying them until I find the color that they like. Right, and today you found that the lime green has the been doing well? The chartreuse green seems to be the, the hot one and, and, the, and the orange. But it changes on the day and even the, the afternoon clarity. and morning, right? Yeah, the color, clarity. The water. Color of the water yes. after a rain, okay? Yeah. Ooh. In the dirty water you use the brighter colors. In the clear water you go with the natural colors. When casting, make sure to cast upstream and let your presentation float down in front of the That's fish. It. There you go. There you go, perfect. Now just let it go, let it drift on its own. Okay. Here's an example of how the row should be presented level with the school. As it floats downstream towards you, be sure to reel in any excess slack to keep your float upright. Here's an example of a float with too much slack and too much line making the row bounce along the rocks below the strike zone. It may take some time for you to figure out the correct depth you need to adjust to, so pay attention during your first few casts. And here's an example of what happens if your line is too tight, or even if the current is very fast. The force of the water may prevent the row from sinking into the strike zone. You may need to add additional sinkers or find a location with less current. 
same kind of cat. In our next good. video, being released very soon, we're going to show you Watch the beauty the Chinook and coho oh, salmon we landed while fishing the Ganaraska River in Port Hope. Oh, oh. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel, and tap the notification bell to keep more fishing content coming your way. I don't know. See Silver. you next time. Oh, Silver. Silver. Yeah. 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 Yeah.